Good morning, afternoon, evening or night to all of you, depending on your time. This is the third episode of the series uh, called Laptop Liquid Loop, or the Triple L project for short. In this video, I'll be showing how to design the perfect water block. If you ever wanted to water cool your laptop but didn't know how, or if you just wanted to make a super fancy custom water block for your desktop system, this video is for you. Stay tuned! The third episode of the Triple L project is about to begin right after this intro. As usual, we start from getting all the measurements. If you remember, I mentioned in the first video that the water block should not be over 15 mm thick. If you haven't seen the first video yet, I highly recommend you go and watch it right now. I go over some basic requirements and give some context to the project. It will be very helpful for you to go and watch it first. Back to the dimensions. The thickness of the washer block is actually not the main dimension, in this case unlike um, with the LLL casing. Here we must make sure the washer block can fit between the two fans on each side. The distance between them is 65 mm, so that is our maximum length. Now, to determine the maximum width, we must first get an idea of how the water block will be placed. I am planning to have the main mass of the water block on all of the copper pipes visible, so not just above the CPU and the GPU. Basically, it will be a cooling block placed above the whole cooling solution of the laptop not including the fans and the radiators, of course. To fix the water block to the cooling solution, I'll be using um, screws, as mentioned in the first video. Thankfully, there are already screw holes in the laptop body that are used to hold the current cooling solution in place. I'll be using those to, hold, to simultaneously hold the washer block and the current cooling solution. There will be four holes within the water block itself for the top four screw holes and extensions down from the water block with the other four holes. Now then, we can assume for now that the width of the copper solution used is the width of the water block. The estimated width of the water block would then be 68 millimeters, estimated because we have to add the extensions as well as the ports. I'll be putting threads through the ports and using the threads to attach the QDCs. So I need to make sure the ports are long enough to allow the QDCs to stick out a little bit from the laptop's body, otherwise the male QDCs won't be able to go in properly into the female QDCs as the laptop's body will be blocking them. The required port length appears to be 20 mm and the extensions are 15 mm. The total width is therefore 100 mm. Now we need some more detailed dimensions. First the distance between uh, all of the screw holes. I won't be making the holes in the water block exactly the same diameter as the screw diameter. That way I have a couple of millimeters to play with but I still need to know the distances so that I'm at least close to the correct position. Secondly, there is a copper pipe at the top that's slightly raised above everything else. This pipe, if I understand correctly, assists with cooling um, the CPU via RAMs, so it's not something I can ignore. I will have to implement a corresponding dent in the washer block space um, where the pipe, this pipe is going to be fit. And for that I need the dimensions for, of the position of this pipe relative to a ed an edge, as well as the length, width and height of this pipe. Finally, the measurements are done. Enjoy the time lapse. I may interrupt it a couple of times to explain anything I didn't mention as we go through the process of creating the 3D model. Alright, just a quick update, I did use a ruler to get the distances at first, but then I found out about a very useful um, automatic measurement machine called SmartScope Flash 200 and decided to use that instead. It allowed me to get extremely accurate dimensions and I can now be sure that my distances are correct. The machine measures in millimeters to four decimal places meaning the measurements are to 10,000 of a millimeter. The only dimension I could not use the machine to measure is the thickness of the raised pipe. But even if my ruler measurement is not accurate enough, it can easily be compensated for when choosing the thicknesses of the thermal pads, 
to go between the existing cooling solution and the water block. Alright, that's the update, now enjoy the time lapse. The thickness of the water block will be 4mm, this could probably be smaller but there is a couple of reasons um, for which I decided not to go any thinner. Number one, I'm unsure about the pressure of the liquid inside the water block. If the pressure is high enough and the um, base is too thin, a crack may well develop. And considering the base is going to be right above the motherboard of the laptop, any leak caused by a crack would be catastrophic. Reason number two is that heat can spread not only normal to the base of the water block but also alongside the, uh, along the base, enhancing the cooling potential of the water block. If the base is too thin, the heat won't have enough material to spread, limiting the performance of the water block. I'm talking about sub 1mm thicknesses there. Some kind of rage, and I don't think I can change myself. With the liquid channels, I must make sure there is enough distance between the edge of the channel and the nearest um, screw hole, so that an o-ring channel can later be added.
solid wall thickness of a CNC is 1mm, which is why I'm keeping the fins at 1mm and not going any thinner, even though I would love to halve the thickness and double the number. This small bit is just so that the water flow is a little bit more pronounced and obvious, reducing turbulence just slightly. Since the weak points of the water block will be the inlet and outlet channels, I want to minimize turbulence there as much as I can. The depth of the liquid channels uh, will be 4mm, just like the base. Finally, I'm adding support at the bottom of the inlet and outlet channels. The base is thinner since I had to move the channels down to avoid colliding with the airing channels. Now the water block is almost complete. All that's left is to design the top part. 
This will be made of acrylic to show off the water block and the liquid a little better and will feature cork to sunk holes for, for the larger screws. This concludes the process of making a 3D computer model of the LL water block. I very much hope you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more. In the next video, I'll be 3D printing the first prototype of the LLL water block. You don't want to miss it. If you have a suggestion or a question for me at any point, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. I read and reply to everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next part. Extensions down with the other four holes for the bottom screw holes. What the fuck is this sentence? And extension down with four holes for the other holes. Whatever.